What's going on you guys? Stacey Wild here with another Ride to Food video. So we are currently in Arkansas on a seven day motorcycling tour through the state courtesy of Arkansas Tourism. And we are finally at the final ride route on this trip, which is the Great River Road National Scenic Byway. So this arch that's behind me is actually the northern terminus of the Great River Road in Arkansas. And we are gonna spend the next two days riding all the way to the southern terminus in Lake Village, Arkansas down, I don't know, like 300 miles. So let's go ahead and get on the road. We have a long couple of days ahead of us and a lot of cool stuff to see and eat. So let's go. Little did I know while I was preparing to take off in the dense fog that morning that the next two and a half days of my trip would be the best ones of the whole ride. And even though the fog wasn't the most welcoming way to start the day, as it melted my mascara off my face well before 8 a.m., it was still a relief to have the hot summer sun blocked for just a few hours that morning. 15 minutes into the ride, you'll find the small historic town of Blytheville. The town itself is known for being a hub for Arkansas's cotton growing industry, but it's also home to this historic Greyhound bus station. Built in the 1930s, it was utilized as a bus station until the 1990s. Today, it's been restored and is used as a tourist information center. Believed to be one of only three Greyhound bus depots of its kind left, it's listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Soon, the fog cleared and the smell of barbecue filled the air as I made my way south. I could smell this place. Oh, I had to stop. <laughs> The hog pen is exactly what I would picture a rural Arkansas barbecue joint to look like inside, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. With plenty of southern comforts, I felt right at home here. Like many Arkansas barbecue joints, the hog pen features plenty of pork and chicken based meals. But for the sake of saving my appetite for the next stop, I opted to pick the pork off these nachos. Welcome to Wilson. It's not exactly your average Delta town. For well over a century, Wilson was a booming cotton producing powerhouse with the entire town being owned by Robert Lee E. Wilson. As technology began to replace manual labor, Wilson's population declined in the 1970s. Eventually, the Wilson family found a new investor to revive their small town. In 2010, the Lawrence Group opened the Wilson Cafe and Tavern. Ever since, Wilson's become a destination town in the Delta once again. This place is so freaking good. Definitely a destination spot. Ride to food approved. I will definitely be coming back here. Wow. It's so crazy to think like we're in the middle of all this farmland and they're slowly revamping this little town and then there's this unique little restaurant. I mean, nothing on the menu is low quality. I am super, super impressed. <laughs> A special thank you to the staff in town for getting me these Arkansas themed drink coasters. I still use them daily at home. I cannot wait for y'all to come and check this place out. However, I spent way too much time in this little town. I enjoyed it a little more than I was planning to. So we gotta get back on the road and catch up and make up for lost time. It's getting a little hot, so I think it's time to go swimming. So let's go ahead and hit the road. I think I got like 80 miles to our next destination. At the time of pioneer settlement, most Delta terrain was lowlands and swamps, rich in virgin timber and wildlife. Some two centuries later, it's now largely agricultural, producing voluminous crops of soybeans, rice, cotton, and wheat. The Arkansas Delta is one of the leading agricultural areas of the world and accounts for nearly half of the total rice production in the United States. For hundreds of miles, the Great River Road passes through these farmlands, 
giving perspective to where our food and other ag products come from. Eventually, the Great River Road crosses over the southern end of Curley's Ridge Scenic Byway near the Mississippi River. And after miles in the brutally hot summer sun, the shade of Curley's Ridge was definitely a welcome sight. Arkansas style. We're leaving the jeans on again, y'all. I'm off to swim with the gators. Ooh. Oh, that feels so good. <laughs> oh, man. Man, there's fish coming. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing with water like this where you don't know what it is. Dang, I've watched, you know, I've watched swamp people, so I'm clearly a professional gator hunter. off in the lakes of Mississippi River State Park was much needed, but you can't be this close to the Mississippi River and not take a ride across one of the state's gateway bridges, especially at sunset. In all of my travels, I've never stayed at a bed and breakfast. So a better way to experience a B&B than to stay at one of the most notable B&Bs in the Delta. Originally built in 1904 as a family home, the Edwardian Inn was transformed into a bed and breakfast in the 1980s, preserving most of its historical construction. In the morning, I got to take a better look at the hotel's historic decor. The floors, stairwell, and even the chandelier are original and date back to the early 1900s. With breakfast served, it was time to load up the bike and explore the rest of the Great River Road. Next time on Discovering the Delta.